if five if five Republicans go with Democrats, then I'm out. So it's what it's it's Not whether likely. probably so. The yeas are two sixteen. The nays are two ten. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. For the first time in American history, the Speaker of the House has been removed. And as you saw, he knew it was coming. He saw the writing on the wall, especially after Democrats made it clear that they were not going to bail him out. And at the start of this whole saga on Sunday, when Matt Gates said he was planning to file a motion to vacate, even he didn't think he had enough votes. But a lot changed since then. And um, one of the biggest factors here was Democrats choosing to not sit this one out. They joined Republicans like Matt Gates in voting to oust Mcarthy. Now, here's what Jayapal said in the lead up to the vote. They are destroying our institution. What does, that mean? does that mean? Does that mean voting impact. president? Like, how is this no, going to play out? We are, we are not voting in any way that would help save Speaker McCarthy. So either president or voting against him. This does impact Democrats in a sense, right? I mean, you guys are trying to fund the government. You're trying to pass the farm bill. You're trying to pass the democratic problem. As much as anybody out here might want to make it a democratic problem, this is not a democratic problem. This is a Republican problem. They supposedly have the majority. They should be able to pick their own speaker. Our speaker is Hakeem Jeffries. It always has been. It it was for 15 rounds. It will continue to be. So does that mean that that just nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy? Nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. And why should we? And that lack of Democratic support right there is ultimately what I think sealed McCarthy's fate. And prior to the vote, he made it very clear that he had no interest in working with Democrats to save his ass. So uh, let's listen. Are you ruling out any sort of power sharing agreement with Democrats or any sort of yeah, deals look, with Democrats? That doesn't work. Look, I, I, I'm a conservative. I'm a Republican. I'm a conservative. They want to get things done. Um, look, I, I know we live in... Uh, our government's designed to have compromise. But look, we're in the majority. You, you don't surrender. Yeah. So I'm not sure if he said that before or after he already knew that they weren't going to save him. But either way, it didn't seem like he had much of a choice here. Right. Democrats let him sink. And that he did. And McCarthy was talking a really big game in the lead up to this vote. For example, he dared Matt Gates on Twitter to file the motion, tweeting, bring it on, to which Matt Gates responded, just did after he officially filed the motion to vacate. And, uh, you know, when you watch the video of McCarthy, all of that arrogance that we saw from him on Sunday and Monday was gone. He looked deflated. So something changed. And I think that he realized, oh, this isn't as sure of a bet as I initially thought it was right on Sunday. Again, Matt Gates even didn't necessarily seem like he felt like he had the votes, but that changed. McCarthy did not initially expect this to be successful, but I mean, he rolled the dice and in the end, he lost. He got fucked big time. Now, we will get to some reactions in a moment, but first, I do want to show you the lead up to the ousting because the pro McCarthy Republicans, needless to say, were absolutely pissed. And Republican Chip Roy had a very strong message from Matt Gates. Come at me and call me a rhino. You can kiss my ass. Look, I've spent a lifetime fighting for limited government conservatism. I have laid it all on the line. I've not seen my family but for two days in the last 30 days. You go around talking your big game and you thumping your chest on Twitter. Yeah, come to my office to come have a debate, mother. You know why? Because I'm standing up for this country every single day. Mm, those sound like fighting words to me. Love to see this. Now, on the House floor, it was also very heated. There was a lot of attacks specifically on Matt Gates. He had to absorb the blows. They would attack him. He'd then respond. And these were attacks that were coming from Republicans, right? And many of them pointed out how Gates was doing this all for attention, which I do think is true, right? And one of them pointed out that he was fundraising off of this, and this was all about him and the show and political theater. But Gates actually had some really solid responses to these Republicans, in particular, when they called him out for fundraising off of this. He had a very good response, in my opinion, that actually led to some Republican boos. And when it comes to how those raise money, 
I take no lecture on asking patriotic Americans to weigh in and contribute to this fight from those who would grovel and bend knee for the lobbyists and special interests who own our leadership, who have, oh, boo all you want, who have hollowed out this town and have borrowed against the future of our future generations. I'll be happy to fund my political operation through the work of hardworking Americans, 10 and 20 and $30 at a time, and you all keep showing up at the lobbyist fundraisers and see how that goes for you. I reserve. Look, credit where it's due, that right there was an incredible response from Matt Gates, and I don't like to ever give him credit, but that right there is how it's done, right? Any lawmaker who's going to put other politicians on blast for corruption, I'm going to applaud that. But aside from the attacks on Gates, the pro-McCarthy Republicans also tried to make the case for McCarthy, and it came off as very fake. Like, we're not going to look at all of these videos, but Elise Stefanik was very overly encouraging of McCarthy. He's just a boy who cares about America. It was it was so disingenuous. But somebody who, if they were going to have any effect, would have been an individual like Jim Jordan, who a lot of far-right Republicans initially wanted to be speaker in place of McCarthy, but he did not support this ouster. Jim Jordan was making the case for McCarthy. But when it's all said and done, even that was not resonating with Matt Gates because look at the way that he shut down what Jim Jordan said about McCarthy. We have done the oversight that we're supposed to do. Because of our oversight, we know that parents were targeted by the Department of Justice. Because of our oversight, we know that 51 former intel officials misled the country weeks before the most important election we have. And because of our oversight, the disinformation governance board at the Department of Homeland Security is gone. Because of our oversight, the memo attacking pro-life Catholics has been rescinded. Because of our oversight, unannounced visits to Americans' home by the Internal Revenue Service has stopped. That happened under Speaker McCarthy. And on the third one, on this side, of the, we know there's a big old ugly bill coming at the end of the year. All kinds of spending, all kinds of garbage in it. We're still in that fight. Frankly, to Matt's point, we don't know how that one's going to shake out. But we do know this. We do know this. On Saturday, we didn't take the Senate's bill. They tried to send over and shove it down our throats on Saturday. We didn't take that bill. And it was a tough position he was in. There were five options on the table last week. Option one was to send a long-term CR over there. That would have leveraged the 1% cut, something a bunch of us voted for. Both parties couldn't get the votes for that one. Second option was to focus on the one issue the country now is completely focused on, the border issue. We couldn't get the votes for that one either. But when the Senate tried to send us that bill, he said no to it. I think the Speaker has kept his word. I know my colleagues and friends are saying different. I think he has kept his word on those three things that we talked about on January 3rd, frankly, that entire week. He has kept his word. I think we should keep him as Speaker. I yield back. Gentleman from Florida is recognized. Yeah, the, the problem with my friend from Ohio's uh, argument is that many of the bills he referenced as having passed are not law. We are on a fast track to an omnibus bill, and it is difficult to champion oversight when House Republicans haven't even sent a subpoena to Hunter Biden. So it's hard to make the argument that oversight is the reason to continue when it sort of looks like failure theater. Failure theater is a very good line. And there was also a moment where Matt Gates talked about the sham impeachment inquiry into Biden. So in trying to do all of this, I do think that the Republicans who are saying that Matt Gates is operating at the behest of Democrats, there is something to it. I don't think that that's Matt Gates's intention. I do think that he's doing this uh, because he just he just wants the eyeballs on him. He wants to flex. But I think that this is genuinely helping Democrats. So Republicans who see that and point that out are correct to be pissed. But the problem is that, you know, all of these failures that Matt Gates is talking about and he's correct about, well, it's likely going to be exacerbated because McCarthy was the most far right speaker that Republicans could possibly get. So it's hard to imagine a more hardline conservative getting the gavel that would appease an individual like Matt Gates and even even others like Lauren Boebert, who initially didn't want to vote for McCarthy to become speaker, voted against this because I think they saw that it's McCarthy or someone who's more moderate. And um, this is all going to plunge the entire House into further chaos because other conservatives 
are going to be jockeying for that position. There's going to be a power struggle. There's going to be factionalization. In fact, these are all things that Matt Gates warned people about back when Paul Ryan was speaker and the far right back then wasn't satisfied with him either. If we take Paul Ryan off the field right now, instead of being able to finish strong in the 115th Congress, we will shatter into a bunch of factions fighting against each other for power. We got enough of that in Washington already. Oh, how the tables have turned. And now because of Matt Gates, the Republican Party is going to be further factionalized because of this. I mean, we are seeing open infighting where Chip Roy is saying, come to my office and say that to my face, mother. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, now, this power struggle is going to be incredibly entertaining. In fact, it's already very entertaining. Uh, and I do want to get some immediate reactions because I think it's safe to say that Fox News was very, very pissed off. And the meltdowns that we saw from them were great because as they are denouncing this move, they're also simultaneously praising Democrats like Nancy Pelosi for no reason. But they did it. So let's watch. Former President Trump weighing in on Truth Social saying, quote, why is it that Republicans are always fighting among themselves? Why aren't they fighting the radical left Democrats who are destroying our country? Judge Janine. I'm furious. First of all, we're without a speaker. This is historic. Something like this hasn't happened in well over 100 years. And now what we've got is total chaos when the Republicans are playing out their infighting on national television in a historic way instead of fighting Joe Biden's policies. The one time we are up in virtually every metric as it relates to the Biden administration, you've got the Republicans going out there and showing how dysfunctional they are as Matt Gates is engaging in fundraising. And I got to tell you something. I am furious. There's no question that this is something that they have been trying to do for almost nine months that McCarthy's been speaker. And the truth is that they've done a lot in Congress. They've got a lot of bills passed. The fact that the Senate doesn't want to take them. They've done a lot in terms of oversight. And, you know, now you've got the Democrats. This is a crazy thing. Democrats who hate the MAGA Republicans are now joining with the MAGA Republicans to oust uh, Speaker McCarthy. This is like the devil is in the middle of all of this chaos. And Donald Trump is right. Why are the Republicans fighting with each other like this? Uh, they, they shot themselves in the foot. And by foot, I mean head. Uh, it, it's it's OK. So everybody, he, they broke promises. I had to go find out what these promises were, right? He promised to use the 2022 baseline numbers as appropriation numbers for this year. And he didn't. Are you angry? He promised not to let bills pass with support of more Dems than Republic Republicans. Maybe he didn't. Are you pissed? I don't know. Not to take up a bill with unanimity among Republicans on the House Rules Committee. McCarthy denies making the two latter promises. So who's telling the truth? I don't know. I'm not sure that I care because I'm with Trump on this. I mean, we're talking about this instead of the border, instead of crime, instead of inflation. Every time the Republicans implode, you just give the Democrats more cover than Gerald Nadler's underpants. We have serious issues right here, right? And instead of uniting and fighting for the people of America who can sense that this country is going in a really bad direction, we're doing this. I get it. It's a historic event, but it's like one of the few historic events that I don't care about. This has no effect on our viewers. Does it make our streets safer? No. Does it make our borders real again? No. Does it make our gas prices go down? No. It's just sound and fury signifying incompetence. And I get I get my sense is this was a personal thing. It's a personal thing that's being acted out publicly. And you know what? It's kind of pathetic. You hear a lot about the impossible job of managing a caucus like this. He only had a five seat majority. That is the same number that Nancy Pelosi had, and she managed just fine. Yep. Nothing like this ever happened when Nancy Pelosi was in charge. I cannot express how much I am loving this. Because if our government isn't actually going to serve the American people and do anything for us, the least they can do is entertain us. And they are doing that. And I am thoroughly enjoying all of this. And the best part is that this is only the beginning. 
because we are about to watch the shitstorm of the century ensue as the GOP in the House scrambles to find someone to replace Speaker McCarthy. And that is going to be a very, very difficult task that might not happen in the near future. So here's what to expect in the immediate future. NBC News reports, the office of the speaker has been declared vacant. This does not immediately trigger a new speaker election, however, because of a succession list McCarthy submitted to the House clerk in January. That list isn't public. In other words, we're not going to know who's going to be the temporary speaker. Since 2003, House rules have required the speaker to submit a list of names to the clerk of members to act in the case of his or her vacancy. According to Rule 1, Clause 8 of the House Rules, the next person on that list shall act as Speaker pro tempore until the election of a Speaker or a Speaker pro tempore. So whoever is first on McCarthy's list will take over as Speaker in an acting capacity. This is a different situation than in January when the House started a new session and could not start any legislative business until a Speaker was elected. Because it was the beginning of a new Congress, the House needed to elect a Speaker in order to swear in members and pass the rules package. So because there's going to be an immediate, albeit temporary, successor named by McCarthy, this means that electing a new speaker now isn't as urgent as it was back in January when nobody could even be sworn in until the speaker was named. In other words, this battle could go on for a prolonged period of time. And the longer it takes for them to find a new speaker, the more strain it's going to put on the House GOP, the more unserious it makes them look to the American public. And I think that's good. I think this is a good day in America, where the fact fascist party is openly cannibalizing itself and demonstrating to the American people that they are incapable of governing. So buckle up, my friends, because it's going to be a wild ride and I'm going to enjoy every single second. Excuse me. <laughs> Vagina. <laughs> <laughs>